A patient just found out he has cancer. What next? Many patients with cancer wonder what caused their condition. In some cases, lifestyle habits such as smoking, excessive tanning, and an unhealthy diet can lead to certain types of cancer. At a molecular level, cancer is formed when a cell is unable to detect several mutations in its DNA during replication. These cells begin to multiply very quickly and its spread leads to advanced cancer stages. The three most common cancer treatments include surgery, the removal of tumors, chemotherapy, drug administration to kill or slow the growth of cancer cells, and radiotherapy, administration of high doses of radiation to destroy and slow the growth of cancer cells. Both chemo and radiotherapy destroy all rapidly dividing cells. This means healthy rapidly dividing cells such as those in the digestive tract, bone marrow, and hair follicles are also affected. Scientists are searching for new and more effective methods to cure cancer. One of them is the use of oncolithic viruses to combat various types of cancer. Oncolithic viruses destroy cancer cells by infecting them with their DNA. It is within the makeup of the viruses to attack only the cancerous cells and not harm the human's healthy cells. So, so then, then why, why are we currently using oncolytic viruses to treat patients with cancer? Actually, the first oncolytic virus was approved by the FDA in 2015. Telemagine leherperepvec, or Imlagic, is a herpes virus that helps patients with melanoma, a form of skin cancer. Scientists have to find viruses that will infect cancer cells only and not healthy cells. This is difficult to do. Viruses also have to be compatible with specific cancers or be genetically modified to attack a specific cancer. This takes time. How much longer will it take for scientists to find effective oncolytic viruses? And how effective will they be long term? Will we see virus resistance such as we have experienced antibiotic resistance? These are common questions among the scientific community. Perhaps you should consider becoming a research scientist or an expert in different science fields. You too can be part of a new scientific discovery. Well, well how, how can, can we, we do, do that? that? To prepare for these careers, you must have a strong background in science. Obtaining specific degrees in microbiology, virology, and immunology are often included in the process. That, that sounds, sounds hard. hard. Many things in life are complicated, but if you are passionate, it is feasible to earn a master's or doctorate degree which requires extensive education after you have completed grade school. But take these words from virus expert Dr. Hansen. In the next 20 to 25 years, oncolytic viruses are going to be our mainstays. They are the future, and so are you. Be encouraged. <laughs>